Well, neurofeedback research goes back more than 50 years to 1958, which when Joe Camilla uh, managed to demonstrate that humans could be trained to control their brainwaves in response to feedback. And if you think about neurofeedback research, there's sort of two strands to it. One is the guys who focused on um, spiritual development, self-development, peak performance. The other one is the people who focused on neurofeedback for therapeutic purposes. So if we first think about the spiritual development people, um, Joe Camilla was the pioneer. Um, him and students such as Jim Hart um, worked with long-term meditators, they studied yogis, they worked with the US Special Forces, and they developed protocols to enhance the development of alpha waves. Now alpha waves are associated with a meditative state um, and spiritual development, also peak performance and self-development. And in fact, um, Jim Hart still has a facility in Vancouver Island where he offers um, a week's worth of um, alpha training, which he describes as 20 years worth of meditation in a week. So if we think about neurofeedback for therapeutic purposes, it was really Barry Sturman who was the pioneer. Now Barry Sturman was doing some sleep research using cats and he noticed a particular brainwave frequency that seemed to be associated with stillness. So he set up an experiment um, where he monitored the cat's brains and he fed them when they hit this particular frequency, which is about 13 hertz. And what this experiment did was he managed to train the cat's brains so that they could actually induce this frequency at will. So when they were to be fed, they induced the frequency and they got fed. Um, and this was a remarkable piece of research at the time. It was published, but there was no particular application. And then he was asked by NASA to do another piece of research on the toxicity of rocket fuel. Um, now they knew rocket fuel was toxic and there have been some stories of some of the astronauts on the early Mercury program hallucinating as they went over the Pacific Ocean. They thought they'd see natives waving at them. Um, but this research ostensibly was nothing to do with the previous research. What he did was he took 50 cats and he injected them all with rocket fuel. And what happened, they all started being sick, they started crying, they started panting, they started salivating. And after about an hour, most of them started having seizures. However, 10 of the cats didn't. After another hour, seven of those cats had had seizures, but three cats had no seizures at all. And when they investigated, they discovered that the cats that were less susceptible to seizures were the same cats who had been brain trained. In other words, the brain training, the neurofeedback, had made them less susceptible to seizures. Now, Barry Sturman then went on to replicate this um, research in monkeys and then humans. And by the mid-70s, he demonstrated that he could reduce or eliminate seizures in epileptic patients in multiple studies. Now, there's one more point worth making on this. Um, there is still debate about whether neurofeedback needs further blinded studies to eliminate the placebo effect. However, this initial study was a blinded study. No one was expecting the effect that was seen. And even if it had been, how does a placebo effect work for a cat?